Can Oklahoma State's Dayton Fix find a way to overcome Penn State's Roman Bravo Young? So far, Fix has lost in the finals on three separate occasions, twice to RBY and once to Nick Soriano. I felt bad because on social media with the handle greatest ever, he's become the brunt of many jokes. But could that become his motivation to finally win an NCAA title? I think it's possible, and by the end of this video, I'm going to give you his keys to victory. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we have to answer the question about whether Fix and RBY will even make the finals. I know it seems silly to ask with them being such heavy favorites, the number one and number two guy at the weight, but there are legitimate threats at 133 pounds. So let's stop stalling and look at the 133 pounds returning All-Americans. Other than Fix and RBY, number three, Mikhail McGee of Arizona State, number four, Lucas Bird of Illinois, number six, Chris Cannon of Northwestern, and number eight, Ravon Foley of Michigan State are all returning. Then add in Virginia Tech's Sam Latona and newly transferred into Wisconsin, Taylor Lamont, both of those guys who are bumping up from 25 to 33, and that's a pretty hefty field. As a matter of fact, to me, it's very reminiscent of the 2019 133 pound weight class. Granted, there's no Austin DeSanto, but still. Both Roman and Fix have beaten McGee and Cannon, but I was pretty shocked to find out that RBY hasn't wrestled Lucas Bird of Illinois. What's so shocking about this is they're both in the Big Ten. And because they haven't wrestled, I think he could actually be a threat to him. As a matter of fact, I have a threat for each of these guys, and Lucas Bird is Roman's. Now, before you call me crazy, please just hear me out. Sophomore Lucas Bird is ranked number four in the country by Intermat and is a two-time All-American, having placed fifth twice. While I love looking at the successes, I think you can actually find a lot in the failures. Look at his losses to Austin DeSanto. He has four of them. And while he got major the first time he wrestled him, he turned that into a tight decision just a month later. But that wasn't a fluke because last season, Bird battled DeSanto to a tight loss again, this time four to three. He was able to tie up DeSanto on his feet, score a reversal on bottom, and take DeSanto to the third period two to one. It wasn't until the last 26 seconds that Bird took a bad shot and DeSanto, of course, capitalized. But I'll tell you what, Bird fought until the bitter end. So let's say Roman and Bird do meet up earlier in the season and Roman beats him pretty bad. Well, at least Bird shows that he can make big leaps in short amounts of time. So these are his three key to victories to beating RBY. The first thing he's going to want to do is tie RBY up so he can't take any of his shots. Next up, he's going to not want to take any bad shots like he did against DeSanto because RBY is even quicker than Austin, so he's going to capitalize. And the third thing is to find extra points where he can just like he scored a reversal against DeSanto, I mean, that could be the difference in beating Roman Bravo Young. And why don't you score some extra points on your own by blast doubling that like button? As a matter of fact, it actually helps out Fanco Wrestling. So if Bird is Roman's greatest threat this season, who is Dayton's? Well, it's somebody who has beaten Fix before in college and is still a part of the field. Fix has four total losses throughout his college career. Two are to Roman Bravo Young, one is to Nick Soriano, so who is that fourth loss? Well, it's Pitt's Mickey Phillippe who beat Dayton Fix back in the 2019 season by a decision. And Phillippe wasn't only on fire during that match. That season alone, he beat seven future national place winners. He beat Dayton Fix, Louis Hayes, Ethan Lezak, Corbin Myers, Tariq Wilson, Austin Gomez, and I forgot about this one, Luke Pletcher. Now, with all of that said, Dayton is probably Mickey's last elite win. While he's qualified for nationals on multiple occasions, he's always fallen just a step short. Where Fix is a three-time runner-up, Philippi is a three-time blood round finisher, just short of placing. And that's probably a big driving factor as to why Philippi is coming back for a final season. So what are his keys to victory to beat Fix? The first thing he's got to do is push the pace, be offensive. Dayton can tend to be a little bit more laid back in these matches. He knows going to be tight, so Philippi has to go after it. The second thing he has to do is score quickly on reattacks. Don't just give up. Quick, quick, quick reattack, just like RBY and Suriano did when they beat. 
fix. And the third thing which is going to be tough is to ride out fix, which Philippi actually did a pretty good job riding out fix during their dual meet match a few years back. But let's say that's not enough and Roman and Dayton just cruise to the national finals. Is Dayton able to overcome Roman Bravo Young or is he destined to get second place? Well, I think his keys to victory actually started on March 20th, 2022 the day after the national finals. You see, this year, I think Dayton's going to have to do things a little bit differently than he's done in the past. I think that means different training. I think that means living a different lifestyle. And I even think that means letting a little bit of money slip by the wayside. What do I mean by that? So we know that these name image likeness NIL deals are huge nowadays. And both of these guys are capitalizing on these deals. And I can tell you with NIL, with the social media, it takes a lot of effort and focus. Roman actually mentioned in an interview that he doesn't want to lose focus on his wrestling because of these deals. But what if he does slip up? It seems that gone are the days of the social media blackout or not using your phone or social media for an extended period of time. But I think, especially in Dayton's case, it's time to bring that back. Just like Jordan Burroughs did before the Olympics, or Austin DeSanto did on his vision quest to beat Spencer Lee in his senior year of high school. This can be extremely beneficial, and that's why Dayton's first key to victory is living a lifestyle without any social distractions. Let go of the money now in order to have the glory later. And Fix can do this. I mean, he's extremely self-disciplined. When he was younger, he did 100,000 push-ups in a year. So every day you have to do 300 and if you miss a day the next the next day it would have to be 600 but this takes it a step further because remember i said at the beginning of the video there's a lot of negative talk on social media about him being a four-time runner up he needs to drown that out and focus on himself i think the next key to victory is facing rby early in the season the past two years they haven't met until the national finals it's better to get your hands on a guy earlier in the season so you could really feel him out and get a hang of his technique now as of the filming of this video, neither Penn State or Oklahoma State have released their official schedules, but if it's possible, Coach John Smith needs to find a way to get Dayton to wrestle Roman early on. And the third key to victory is to improve his technique. He better be watching Roman Bravo Young's matches on a daily basis. Now, I'm no technician, but he's got to stop getting caught just wide open. There are multiple times in a match against Soriano, against Roman, where he's just caught with that whole side of his body open, and those guys pounce. I really do think that this matchup is going to be one on their feet. And for Fix, that's not just pushing Roman around the mat. No, he's got to be offensive. He's got to be force and points and forcing stall calls and not just in the last 10 seconds of the match. That's how I think Dayton Fix can actually beat Roman Bravo Young this season. And next up is 141 pounds. I'm doing these weight by weight previews weekly before the season. And I'll tell you what, without Nick Lee at 141, this weight is a doozy.